All right, so they've come to pick up the uh, DeLorean back there. This dude uh, who came to pick it up, I've noticed something about the car shipping industry is usually run by like Russian guys, Romanian guys seem to dominate this industry. I, I don't know why. This guy's from Moldova. He doesn't speak any English. So I'm using Google Translate on my phone to communicate with him. He showed up with a pickup truck and a trailer to get this. This is not how I would ship a car, but this is how the buyer is shipping this car. I, I recommended that they do, do it this way, but they're doing it this way. And now the guy is turning around in the field. So he's pulled into this field so he can make a U-turn to go get the car. There's Omar keeping a watchful eye on him. And there's the DeLorean. Is he spinning? You're good. Uh, what's good in Russian, Omar? You're you're tovarish. Spew off some Mexican Russian for us. Gdoski. Yeah. What's that mean? I don't know. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were actually speaking something. He's gonna hit this fucking tree. Oh man. He's gonna hit our no parking sign. I'm just standing back here to watch the carnage. There's already tons of damage on this trailer. I love this trailer, actually. I like that it's got these uh, little bottom bottom out casters back there, and he's got three access doors. This is a 34 foot enclosed trailer. It's not a hallmark. It's not a top quality trailer. Um, <laughs> this is just hilarity ensued. Now we're gonna have two guys that English is not their first language trying to communicate. He has no idea what you're saying, Omar. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to go use my phone to Google Translate. Oh no, is he gonna try to U-turn? There's not enough room to U-turn. Okay, he's gonna back up. Keep your distance, fellas. The DeLorean, DeLorean waits, trembling in fear on its way to Italy by way of Moldova. Here it is. DeLorean time machine number 28. Uh, we've got 29 in the bay right now. We've built more time machines than anybody on the planet. And that's just a fact, Jack. We can prove it. All you got to do is go to Bob's Prop Shop. On our Facebook page, we have an album of uh, build pictures of every single car we've ever done. This car, uh, the car itself was provided by the buyer. It's a non-running car. They didn't want to pay us to fix it because they just want it for display. So the car doesn't actually run. And uh, he's, he needs to stop there because he's, or he needs to straighten up. Yeah. This is gonna be interesting. So they're gonna, he's gonna ship this car to the port and then, um, then they're gonna ship it to Italy where it'll be on display. Uh, I'll try to post a follow-up and post where it is for my European and Italian fans who want to go look at the car itself. Now, this is a combo car. They wanted it to be able to have both the plutonium chamber and the Mr. Fusion. I showed that in another video. I think he needs to move up a little. Omar driving. Hey Omar, I don't think we have enough road to get up to 88. So I've been trying to Google Translate with this guy because he was, first he put the hook on the radiator, then he wanted to put the hook onto the bands. <laughs> so we used a strap to tie it to the cross member and um, I told him, I said, never stand in front of the winch line because if it were to snap off under pressure, it would 
snap back and hit you in the face and kill you. You know, I've seen videos of that, which is why I'm videoing now. This is either going to go on YouTube or Best Gore. We'll see. So, cars are getting loaded. I always like to videotape the loading procedure of the car, not necessarily for the YouTube, but uh, just in case something horrific goes wrong. Like for instance, how the hell is Omar going to get out of the car? There's no windows. And I usually tell them to cheat it a little bit over to the uh, right, even though it makes it off center, but you got to be able to open the door. Hey, if you play this backwards, it's like when the car comes out of Doc's truck van in the park. <laughs> I just rewind it, play it backwards. That over there is going to be uh, car number 30. Waiting in the wings. Oh, yikes. He's going to butt this up against a Mustang. My least favorite car on earth. Let's see here. Door not open. Is it under pressure? Okay. Um. All right, well, the car's loaded into the trailer. It's not my responsibility anymore. I've signed off on it. It's been inspected. I hope it arrives in Italy safely, but let this be a lesson to you. When you buy an exotic car, I always tell my customers, look, you just paid like a hundred grand for a custom car or whatever you paid. And then don't be a cheapskate on the shipping because this guy's a really nice guy and he's doing a really good job. But I wonder, how does he read our American road signs? How could he have possibly read a CDL commercial guidelines book? And he's going to drive this car to, the, I guess, Houston or Galveston to be shipped to Italy. And... Uh, then they're going to put it in a dockyard where they're going to put a cover on it, they said. They said they're going to throw a tarp over it before it's loaded onto a ship. Really? I have no control over this. None whatsoever. So uh, if you buy an exotic car, don't skimp on the shipping. That's your friendly, uh, you know, advice from your car builder friends. Hey, I'm Video Bob. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.